So I'm going to do another video today here and show you how to remove and reinstall both the carriage and the carriage bay on an Underwood standard typewriter. Now the first thing to notice is I have already removed the front line scale of the machine, which is right here. And to do that, there's two screws on either side, one that sits here and one that sits over here. And that allows free range of the front end of the carriage. To remove the shift bay first, we're going to take a look at the right end of the carriage. And right above the carriage release lever, you'll notice this small screw. This is a pivot screw that allows you to detach this hanging lever here. This is what gives you the backwards tension on the carriage shift so it doesn't fall out of alignment when you shift. The other thing you want to be careful and take note of is this lever or bar right here. Now if you'll notice, that is what the shift mechanism actually rides against, and you want to make sure that that doesn't get bent or moved. Now to actually remove the shift bay of this machine, we are going to tilt the main edge of the carriage back, grab the paper table, tilt this forward, and then wiggle it until it swings out. From this point, the only thing holding the bay of the carriage in is this small little um, torsion bracket here, and we can unhook that on both sides and remove the central part of the carriage. As you can see, this is the torsion bar that gives tension to the shift. Now with the carriage bay out of the machine, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's very basic. I'm going to set that aside. Now we turn our attention to the carriage itself, which is basically this small rectangular frame. Now. Ordinarily, you can take the carriage off all in one piece, and that is generally what I do, but it's easier to clean and diagnose problems and do servicing when you can take the carriage apart into two pieces. Once you have the front line scale off, the only thing you need to remove are two screws here and one over here, and I'm going to grab my screwdriver and take care of that. If I can just find the proper bit. I'm just going to undo. Give myself a little room. Undo that one, I'm going to move the carriage over and undo this one. Uh, don't lose these screws, they are proprietary. And then we're going to come, let me move the camera. We're going to come underneath the right end of the carriage here and pull the draw band off the machine. And I'll show you where to stick that. If we move the carriage back to the extreme left and hear the bell ring, there is a small pin on top of the machine that we can slip the draw band right over. Coming back to the top of the machine, this is where that small little pin is. It's just a screw in the top of the frame that has a milled or whatever cut line around the edge of it so you can slip the end of the draw band on. Once that is on there, I'll back this up. We can actually just grab the entire carriage and lift it right off. And, and, and there's your carriage, this small rectangular frame. And from there, we can do whatever servicing we need to do on the machine itself. Installing it is easy. We're going to take the carriage frame again and line up the two square brackets on the back end of that rod and place those over the two posts on the edge of the machine. I don't really know what they're called. doesn't really matter. And then we take those two screws we just removed or that you might have removed weeks before this and put them in the opposite ends to hold down the bearing rod on this carriage. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and move the carriage over to the left. I lost a screw there. Yeah, this one's important, don't forget it. Anyway, move the carriage all the way over to the left, grab the draw band, move the carriage with it, and we're just going to hook it back on to the underside, and that's how you get it reinstalled. I would recommend placing a dot of oil onto the bearing rod, uh, rubbing it along the length of the carriage, and that should alleviate any sticking. You don't want excess pools of oil, but you want it to glide perfectly smooth. Next we get into reinstalling the shift bay, which is a little bit trickier. If you notice, we got the um, torsion bar up here with the two little hooks that cup the pivots on either side of the carriage. If I can get these in frame, the other one's hard to see, but it's kind of back underneath um, the left knob. We're just going to set this whole carriage onto those, just like that. And then comes the slightly tricky part. 
just get this. Okay, so we're on the torsion bar on both ends. We're going to pick up the front end of the carriage. We're going to tip this forward and slide it underneath. There are shift stops on either side of this that control your capital and lowercase alignment. And by tipping the carriage part forward and the frame part back, you can bypass that whole thing and slip the carriage on. Now there's one more thing that we need to do before we can start installing the rest of the pieces. Okay, this bit might be hard for you to see. This rod right here is the shift actuator rod. And if you'll notice, the carriage rides on it with a ball bearing wheel on top and a small hook on the bottom. We want to finagle this so that the, if I can point with an indicator of some sort, so that the ball bearing is riding on top of the rod, this is the rod, and then the hook for the carriage is right underneath it. The next important thing is this dangly bit here. I will pull the camera back. This small piece gets brought right up here and see that pivot hole? That is where we are going to stick the small pivot screw. So I'm going to put my phone and flashlight down for a moment and place this in its little hole just like that. Okay, with that in place we can go ahead and swing this lever up all the way and then start to screw this in and it should index properly by itself and once that's in you should have no problem shifting the carriage. Hoping that wasn't too hard to see but as you can see, the carriage shifts freely, doesn't bind, and that's it. It is pretty much installed. You can go ahead and put back on any body panels that you took off of it, and then, of course, the front line scale. And there's one thing about that that I do want to point out. So over here on the front of the machine, when we put in the line scale, we're going to slide it in from one side to the other and seat it on these two holes. Now, there are two screws that came off of it. One screw is a little bit longer than the other one. The short screw goes in on the left side. And the long screw goes in on the right side. And if you notice, there's no threads for it. That's because you have this little L-shaped stopper that also goes in it. It goes in with the little L piece facing the left side. And it's tricky to get it in there into a way that you can hold it. Once you have that taken care of, the little L piece bracket here should tighten back up onto it and hold everything firmly in place. I believe I've put the line scale onto the base backwards, so I'm not going to tighten anything down now. Besides, I still have adjustments to make. So, long story short, that is how you install the carriage on an Underwood 5, or 3, or 2, or basically any Underwood typewriter ever made. So I did not intend to do a video on this just now, but I figured that since I already had it apart and was replacing things on it that broke, that I would just do a video anyway just to kind of demonstrate the process because it's a question that I'm often asked. So I hope you found that helpful and best of luck in all of your typewriter repair endeavors and hopefully you won't lose things as much as I do. Here is just a quick footnote on installing that little L piece. I did, in fact, have the line scale on upside down, but I fixed that. We're going to move the carriage to the extreme left, grab the piece so the L is facing the left, and hold it up against the edge of the bearing rod that's for the, let's see, the right-hand shift mechanism. Let me see if I can get that on camera better. Okay, that should be better. Can I make this brighter? Yes. So, again, facing the left, like that, we're going to hold the end of it, place it flat against this bar here, and push it straight down in until you can see the hole from the other side. Then, we're going to take the long screw, stick it all the way... Dropped it. Hang on. Then, we're going to take the long screw for the second time, put it in there, and finger tighten it until it holds itself together and then spend an hour looking for your screwdriver, which you had in your hand two seconds ago. God, ow. Hang on. Okay, I found it. There's hope for me after all. Just kind of tighten it all the way down. And before you tighten all the way, make sure it's square, and then tighten all the way. 
So when you hit the left margin and then hit the margin release, it still stops at zero. And we're done.